son Daniel Stewart. Yeah, but I wasn't Captain Picard. 
Well, who were you then? I was some other bloke living on another planet. <laughs> With that nice actress. What was her she name? She was nice, wasn't she? She was lovely. Yeah. She was lovely, yeah. I, I don't know. How were you not... Well, you were the car. You just got that thing attached to your head. No, I was leading a completely separate life. On a seat, <laughs> that's a separate you. life. <laughs> With a, a wife and children. Now, Captain Picard never What did they wife. call you? What was your name? Old Baldy. <laughs> oh no, that's what Marina says. <laughs> <laughs> Cayman, you, you were called Cayman. Like the islands. All the islands. Yeah. Really? You sure about that? <laughs> well, thank you. Anyway, I only mentioned this part of something because I think I can safely say, watch this space, but the two of us may have been freezing that relationship at some point in the future. I say no more. No more. In, in not quite so nice and fuzzy and warm-hearted a way, maybe. Because it was a bit cute, wasn't it? Uh, I had a wing on and pajamas and... Yes, yes, you did. You did, I remember. You look very lovely, very charming. See, that was it. It, this might not be quite so lovely. It is true, though, isn't it? Oh, no, you're right. That was coming up might not be quite so cosy. But, um... Everybody loves that episode. Am I right in a light? It's interesting. It is. How many times every time I do a call, people come up and say that's my favorite episode? Yeah, and that makes me happy. Yeah, I like that. And you know, in a light, I believe this is sort of Star Trek Triple Pursuit, but I do believe that in a light was the only episode that was the product of a spec script. Now, do you know what a spec script is? No, then I'll tell you. Cases, blank cases. I know. Nobody a does. spec script is a script not written by one of the writing team or the right coming from the writer's building, from Michael Pillow or Gene Roddenberry. A spec script is one that gets sent in by a fan. That was in a light, and it proved to be, I think, a, 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 among the best five or six best scripts we ever had. So don't despair about your scripts that you've sent in. You never know who <laughs> may have written the next in a light. I, I wouldn't despair if you've written any next generation scripts. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not going to work. I think that shit has settled, my friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that wouldn't go anywhere. At all. But you know, for the new lot, the new lads building at Paramount, all those guys, give it a shot. You never know. Yeah, it's a whole new, new next generation, William. Yeah. A different generation. And they're very good. They are they're attractive too. They're very attractive yeah. people. Which you couldn't say about the next generation cast. But <laughs> Not the first thing you would just collectively describe as that. I mean, I mean, Michael Dorn Michael Dorn, was, Michael most, Dorn was nice. most attractive of all. Yeah. And, of course, Denise. And Denise. Oh, yes. Denise and Michael Dorn. They you've got it, really. It's the end of the line. I mean, old turtle head. And, um, I'm sorry. I mean, no offense to Klinghorns when I call them turtle head. But <laughs> <laughs> that's how he was now. I think we should open it up. Well, how is this I going to work? Have they explained to you? Does anyone have any questions? Do we have microphones and questions? Is it question mic yes. 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 yes! Yeah, oh, let's do it! Let's have questions! <laughs> All right, no, I... You, you choose. I, t I ask a question. No, choose. Oh, I choose? <laughs> <laughs> Put your hands up. Anyone wants to ask a question? All right, there's somebody right in the front, down by you, yes. This won't be for me, so I don't even know why I'm asking. Hi there. Hello. Hi. Uh, this question is for Patrick Stewart.
Hi there. Um, I'd like to start out with it's amazing to be here and meeting you. Uh, I grew up watching The Next Generation and uh, you are one of my heroes. And I have to say, you're probably a hero to most people here. Um, but I was wondering, who is your hero and who do you look up to? Well, thank you for that. And I, I hope what you say is correct. I know it not to be correct in one sense, because there's one person not a million miles away from where I'm standing right now to whom I am not a hero. <laughs> well, I missed all that. I wasn't listening. Sorry. <laughs> stay, stay sharp. I, I'm, I'm with you. I just didn't listen. Um, yes, I can answer that question. My personal hero was not a hero, but a heroine. And she was my sister-in-law, my eldest brother's wife, um, who passed on just over a year ago. And her name was Alma. And just three months after she married my brother, she was diagnosed with tuberculosis. And she spent the next three years in a sanatorium and she had one lung collapse and half of another lung removed and she died only a year ago in her 80s and throughout her life was the most optimistic cheerful amusing entertaining supportive person i have ever known and Alma, when uh, as time passed and age began to tell with her, never ceased to be a support for everybody around her. So she's my personal hero. Thank you. Franchise, 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 
Prussia. At the heart of Prussia, Prussia is um, a fundamentally optimistic, positive view of what the future can bring if humankind approaches it with the spirit of comradeship, collaboration, mutual trust, and goodwill. And that is, I think, one of the reasons why both franchises have, have attracted so much attention. I'll tell you a quick little story and then we'll move on to a question for Daniel, because the film television is interesting and exciting. And I've always loved working with Dan. We worked in Star Trek. We did an extraordinary production of a play at West Yorkshire Playhouse. Boy. Um, the play by the great British Yorkshire playwrights, Jamie oh. Yes, Yorkshire! <laughs> by the way, I just have to mention that it's about six minutes to the end of the first half of Huddersfield versus Blackburn. <laughs> And if anybody has an ongoing scoreline, they can let me know. Please feed that in. Um, anyway, we did this production of a play called Johnson Over Jordan. And Duke Kelly, the director, invited Dan to join the company. And we worked actually very closely in that, very closely in that production. And it was fantastic. It was one of the best ever Forgetting Lines incidents. Because I, I followed it, I was his alter ego, if you like. And because it's a very weird play, the first time you see me, I've... Well, for want of a better word, I had like a stocking on my head. You know. So, I have no words at this point. He's just realized he's dead, and has now outleft his body. You're getting a sense of how weird this play was. And is supposed to be asking me questions which I cannot answer because I have no lines. Um, and he completely went up, had no idea what he was doing, and he just looked at me and went, Come on! Come on! <laughs> and I went, I'm not bailing you out of that. Besides which, you can't speak very well when you have pantyhose on your head. <laughs> Anyone who's robbed a bank will know this. <laughs> Gets in your mouth. It's like that fingers down the blackboard thing. It's horrible. Next question. I think we've answered that one. Is that all right? Your turn. You pick somebody. Nil nil. Nil nil. So Rhodes hasn't scored for Blackburn. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My lads, I think, are going to come through. You keep an eye on us. We're modestly placed at the moment in the championship. But we have some young guys coming through, and we are going to take that division by score. Nobody cares. <laughs> The only 
celebration or anniversary that springs to mind was my 50th birthday and it was so disastrous that I can't even begin to tell you about it but it was one of the worst days in my life and there's not a member of the Star Trek company who don't remember it vividly it was so awful but I'll leave that there um, anniversaries something special I do remember that Paramount celebrated its 75th anniversary as a movie studio while we were shooting there and Bill William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy were invited to be in the great studio photograph of all the living legends of Paramount Pictures and none of us were <laughs> because we weren't living <laughs> Leonard, Bill, maybe to Forrest, but not us. But, two years ago, Paramount celebrated 100 years of being a famous movie studio. <laughs> Kirk Douglas, Brad Pitt, Steven Spielberg. You were like standing next to George standing between Oliver Stone, the director. That's a bit weird. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that. And you shouldn't say it either because you may want to work with him on that. Keep that. <laughs> I think he'd respect me for saying that. He's that mad. A fatherly bit of advice. That <laughs> mad Hollywood directors. Oliver Stone, Ben Kingsley, Sir Ben Kingsley. Thank you. <laughs> This huge studio was awash with famous people. I'm going to tell you a little story. Okay. I mean, I was beside myself with excitement. And apart from the fact that I made the mistake of introducing Antonio Banderas to his wife. <laughs> he says I have to be careful. You, I always interject at this point. We once went to the Tonys and we were escorted to our seats in the second row. And as I am doing this, excuse me, down the thing, I realize that I am going to be sitting directly behind Nicole Kidman, who I have had this thing for for my entire, well, forever, since dead calm, but we won't talk about that. We sit down and I'm like, oh my God, I'm literally inches away from her naked back. She's like, oh, this she wasn't naked, it was the Tonys, but you know what I mean, she's with the backwards gowns. He learns, leans over and he goes, who's that? <laughs> what do you do in that situation? Well, before the very on with your story, of introducing Antonio Van der Best. That was true, I do remember that. I, I Were they pleased to meet each other? <laughs> Were they pleased to meet each other after you introduced them? They were lovely. They were both, I think it had happened before, but they were both very, they didn't say, oh, for heaven's sake, don't realign my husband and wife. They didn't, they were very nice. And anyway, you can always do that stupid British actor thing. You, know? you don't know any better. I always know somebody is famous. I'm always not so sure who they are. And that can be tricky. So I've learned over the years not to say, Because it's Matt Damon. <laughs> exactly. And that's true too. Hey, you could not have picked a better example. So I was sad. so there were these, I mean everywhere you turn, there were screen idols ranging from the what well, 90 year old Kirk Douglas um, to uh, yeah, indeed Brad Pitt. But I found myself, just found myself, as you do, standing in a conversation with Harrison Ford and, um, and uh, Dustin Hoffman. We're just chatting. And I'm trying to pretend that I'm 
really cool and I'm not impressed or anything like that. <laughs> a bit like me and Carl Urban last night. Yes, indeed. Yes, but yes that wasn't good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, he doesn't talk, he's, he, has, he wouldn't even look at me today. <laughs> Ask well, him about it. I tried to be friendly with him and it went all wrong. <laughs> Very wrong. <laughs> There's another restraining order coming, I can feel it. <laughs> Go on, sorry, I keep interrupting. Shall I finish this song? God, please, for the love of God, finish the story. And while we're standing there just chatting, up wanders Morgan Freeman. <laughs> and Harrison Ford turned to him and said, My God, Morgan, are you still alive? <laughs> <laughs> international cinema. But to them, they're guys who've known one another for 40 years, 50 years. Just like, you know, the Star Trek group. And so they have that kind of, just as it would be with us and Michael and Jonathan Lavar and Gates and Marina, the same kind of relationship. To one another, they are not towering figures of the gold is. screen. For instance, when I arrived yesterday in the green room, I opened the door and right in front of me was Dawn, was Michael Dawn. And I introduced myself by reaching around and squeezing his breasts. <laughs> that man is cut. <laughs> he is a solid figure of a man. Tight. <laughs> I say that as a heterosexual man who just appreciates men taking care of themselves or something like that. <laughs> Look, I'll, I'll shut up again. I'll be another restraining on different dawn. I know you came here to hear about Star Trek, and we've hardly mentioned it. We've hardly, we don't even want to talk about it. I hope that, and I'm, we're not going unless somebody throws us off. Never, we're not leaving. We're not leaving. But I hope that this kind of, I hope that the fact that we're enjoying ourselves might mean that you're enjoying yourself. <laughs> 